In this installment of Head First JavaScript Programming Teasers, we're going to take another look at objects. One of the reasons we keep coming back to the topic of objects is because in JavaScript, almost everything is an object. Let's break that down a bit to see exactly what we mean. In an earlier video in this series, we explained that the values in JavaScript fall into two categories, primitives and objects. The primitives category includes numbers, booleans, strings, null, and undefined. The objects category includes everything else. That means all the JavaScript built-in objects like math, date, JSON, along with browser objects like window, document, as well as any objects that you create. It also means that both arrays and functions are also objects, which is surprising to some people. You might think of arrays and functions as fundamentally different things than objects, but in fact, they are indeed objects. And even stranger, sometimes primitive numbers, booleans, and strings are objects too. So let's dig a little deeper. First, we'll take a closer look at arrays. As you're learning about objects and arrays, it might seem like these are two totally different things. An object is a collection of properties, while an array is a collection of values ordered by an index. We use different syntax to access the properties of an object than we do the values in an array. But despite these differences in syntax, underneath, an array really is a special kind of object. It's an object that uses an index to access properties instead of a property name. Because an array is an object, an array has properties and methods. You see these when you use properties like length to get the length of an array, or when you use push to add a new value to an array. You can even add your own properties if you want. Here, we're creating an array of flavors with three items, chocolate, vanilla, and strawberry, and then adding our own property to that array, store, that we set to the string webfill iced creamery. Adding this property doesn't affect the length of the array at all. If we check the length of flavors in the console, we see that the length is still three. We can use a for in loop to inspect the flavors array a little more closely. In head first JavaScript programming, we show you how you can use the for in loop to iterate through all the properties in an object. Well, an array is an object too, so we can use the for in loop to iterate through all the properties of an array. Here, we're displaying each property name and value as we loop through the properties in the array. And here are the results. We see that we have four properties, three with the property names 0, 1, and 2, and one with the property name store. But clearly, the array is treating some of these properties in a different way than it treats the property store. And that's what makes it a special kind of object. The array adds this layer on top of an object, providing this index capability, along with various properties and methods, like length and push, and so on, that you can use to work with arrays. So what about functions? Functions seem completely different than objects. A function is bundled up code that you can call and produce a value that's returned to the code that called it. So how on earth is that anything like an object? Again, a function is a special kind of object. There are special objects that you can call and get values back from. Now, most of the time, you won't need to think about functions being objects because you use functions and objects in completely different ways. However, there are times when you can see how functions are object-like. For instance, functions have properties and methods. In Chapter 13 of Head First JavaScript Programming, you learn how to use the prototype property of a function to set up a prototype chain. And later, we use the call method of a function to control the value of this in the function we're calling. To really test out the idea that a function is an object, let's make one using the function object's constructor function, which is function with a capital F. Here, we're making a new function object named addToNums by calling the constructor function with new and passing in three arguments. The first two arguments become the parameters of the resulting function while the third becomes the body of the function. When we display the value of add to nums, we see that we have indeed created a function with two parameters that returns the sum of those two parameters. It looks a little odd in the console, but we can use it just like any other function. So when we call add to nums, passing in two and three, we get back five, so our function works. In practice, you'll rarely, if ever, create functions this way. 
but it's an interesting exercise to do so to see more clearly how a function really is an object. One thing we spend quite a bit of time on in Chapter 10 of Head First JavaScript Programming is the idea that functions are first class values, which means that you can assign a function to a variable, store a function as a value in an array or object, pass a function to another function, or get a function back from a function. Once you understand that a function is an object, it's much easier to understand this concept of a function being a first class value. Finally, let's take a look at numbers, booleans, and strings. We know that these are primitive values in JavaScript. In other words, they're definitely not objects, and yet sometimes they are objects. The best example of this is a string. Let's say we create a string phone number and set its value to 555-1212. At this point, phone number is a primitive string. But even though phone number is not an object, we can use properties and methods like length and substring just like we could if it was an object. So how does this work if phone number is not an object? What happens is that as soon as you try to access a property or method of the primitive string phone number, it's converted to a string object behind the scenes. So we start out with the primitive string value, then we try to access a property of the string like length. So the phone number then gets converted to an object, and once the phone number is a real object, then the property or method we accessed, in this case length, is used and a value is returned, in this case 8. Once that's done, then phone number goes back to just being a regular primitive string again. And all this is hidden from you. You don't have to think about it or worry about how it's happening. You never have to create string objects or number objects or Boolean objects yourself. You just access the properties and methods you need, and JavaScript takes care of converting the primitives to objects and back to primitives again behind the scenes. So now, when you hear people say, everything in JavaScript is an object, you'll know what that means. It takes a little time to wrap your head around the idea at first, but once you get the hang of it, you'll see objects everywhere.